Hi everyone, welcome back. Wanted to explore the Renaissance and what we can learn today in terms of interconnectedness and interconnectivity of different disciplines. So the Renaissance was taking place from the 14th century to the 17th century and promoted things like classical philosophy, literature and art where a number, quite a number of intellectuals came from that period of time and they're quite notable as we look back. So the idea of humanism was popularized, that people were capable of inventions, of creating new forms of philosophy. So these notable people came from it. Leonardo da Vinci, Galileo, Thomas Hobbes, no Dante, Machiavelli, William Shakespeare. And what they discovered was that linking disciplines that may be quite contradictory even, uh, such as theolo uh, theology and science perhaps, were found to help each other. For instance, artists like da Vinci incorporated scientific principles such as anatomy into their work. So um, recreating the human body in a painting, for example, could be more realistic. Another thing was the Last Supper and Salvador Mundi, which was referenced in the previous video of Spread the Gospel. It was the painting of God, or Jesus Christ, as the savior of the world. So someone as smart as da Vinci to even consider God is something to be noted. So what seemed to be humanism and individualism um, also coincided with their exploration of the Bible and so, so they're reproducing the Bible in art form. And could even be seen as a movement and reformation of the church when Martin Luther in the 16th century started a revolutionary movement, which led to the Protestant Reformation, another form of Christianity. Now, furthermore, if we explore the life of Leonardo da Vinci, you see he was dubbed as the Renaissance man because he was like a polymath. He had um, a wide range of knowledge and learning. So he was a painter, architect, inventor, and student of all things scientific. Apparently he was self-taught and self-educated and he thought that our observation was perhaps our greatest power as humans. And probably because this abundance of diverse interests, Da Vinci failed to complete a significant number of paintings and projects, but I guess that's the downside living in the 21st century. You know, we used to have encyclopedias instead of or mobile phones, mobile devices, and we might be living in the right time to understand different disciplines and how it can help. And to think that it's impossible and takes too much effort, it might be the contrary. A lot of inventions in history were inspired by nature. or by God. We know the Wright brothers and how they were founders of the modern day aviation and planes. Here we see that they were, they, part of their observations was from birds. It's just another exemplification on why, on the benefits of exploring other disciplines inspired by um, nature even. We know that silk is one of the first examples of biomimicry. And pyramids inspired 
or thought to be inspired after mountains, umbrellas out of this lotus leaves. And then we head to Leonardo da Vinci and what he invented, sort of this bat suit to be able to, for man, to be able to fly. The point may be that we can unlock potential solutions and be problem solving if we allow different disciplines, consider other disciplines than the one at hand. And that's probably what Leonardo observed and why he was ahead of his time. Then there's Velcro and what that is very useful now. Then the bullet train was inspired by the King Fisher. Eastgate Center. And then we head to circular economy and which does sound like a big term, but the, an easy way to understand this is the, the idea of planning business models with no waste. So the manufacturing process, there wouldn't be any waste. You know, so a lot of things were inspired by animals to think that we would need to look to animals, to think that we would need to look to a different discipline to solve something, maybe uncanny, but um, surprising that it could help. For example, we're living in a time of the coronavirus as we speak, and there are claims that shark skin is antibacterial. So if you try to implement that, that may help in times of pandemics. And this uh, sub was created by the Ohio State University. So if we further explore the circular economy, biomimicry would be under the umbrella of that. I'm taking note of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, we see that they advocate for the circular economy and they have a plethora of partners with the same mission here. It's really a list of partners they gathered and assembled and work, are working with for mankind. The professor in the previous link we were at in the biomimicry section in the interview, he said, looking back in the future, we might be living in the circular economy and um, where I used to think that it may be another renaissance that we're living in. And perhaps the appeal of superheroes on the younger generation is biomimicry once again. Spiders, they shoot different types of web, real spiders, seven to be exact. Poison Ivy, the super villain, I should say, from DC, Wolverine, who do have semi retractable claws, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy, and Ant Man, Black Panther, and how he is popularized in the 1960s. We know of the civil rights movement and how it relates to Black Lives Matter. Perhaps we may need to incorporate interconnectivity in order to solve different areas of our life instead of isolating the problem to be siloed, um, meaning that it would hinder communication and cooperation. Rather, if there's a sense of cohesion and harmony of different facets, different aspects, which may not seem to relate, may do in the long run, may do in the short run, may do in the medium term. If we increase liaison, that can be the problem in itself. Thank you again, guys, for watching. Hope you have a great day.